Hello, everybody. This week, we're learning about population dynamics, things that impact it, where, you know, what stages of a population is a country in, and more than likely, probably going to start digging into some, like, past policies of governments that have impacted population. So one country in particular that's always fun to learn about is China. So what I'm going to do is share my screen and I am going to read to you. Is my charger falling? It's all good. I'm going to read to you an article about communist China. Um, Probably not gonna be at school tomorrow. So this is your e-learning assignment for Tuesday, February 16th. Uh, all right, so here we go. The rise of the Communist Party in China. China existed under a series of dynasties for nearly 2000 years. While these dynasties changed over the years and there were many costly wars as power changed hands, the basic structure of society remained relatively stable. This long lasting system came to an end when modern nationalist reformists overthrew the Xing dynasty in 1911. The Republic of China was established and the dynastic came to an end. The Republic of China was challenged after World War I by the growing Chinese Communist Party, the CCP. The CCP eventually rose to power in China in 1949. Since then, China has become one of the last remaining communist countries. The CCP controls both Chinese politics and culture. To understand modern China, therefore, one must understand the party itself. Democratic centralism. The Chinese Communist Party is officially organized on the principle of democratic centralism, where the party discusses an issue thoroughly before voting on it. After voting, the side that loses is expected to abide by the majority decision without further conflict or discussion. The Russian political theor theorist Vladimir Lenin, who proposed the principle, described democratic centralism as freedom of discussion unity of action. Since democratic centralism keeps power in the hands of the majority, the party leader is also the country's leader. Currently, Xi Jinping, that's how you pronounce that, Xi Jinping, is both the general secretary of the Chinese Communist Party and the president of the People's Republic of China. This means that the CCP works hand in hand with the government. Mm, there he is, Xi Jinping. Founding and early history. After World War I ended, an anti-imperialist movement arose in China. The Treaty of Versailles offered the coastal Shandong region to Japan rather than China. To many Chinese, this seemed unfair to China. This sparked demonstrations and the birth of the CCP. The, CCC, the CCP started small with only 50 members in its first meeting in 1921. They called for the establishment of a communist party associated with Communist International, an international organization that advocated world communism. While the CCP was just getting started, the Kuomintang or the KMT party was in power at the time in China. Chiang Kai-shek became the leader of the KMT in 1925 and saw the new communist group as a threat to his power. He marched on Shanghai, a city controlled by communist militias, and massacred 5,000 people, even though they welcomed him when, they, when he arrived. That May, tens of thousands of communists and their sympathizers across China were killed by KMT. This began a long conflict be between the KMT and the CCP, Chinese Civil War and World War II. In July 1927, the CCP formed the Chinese Workers and Peasants Red Army under General Mao Zedong. 
the Red Army organized several uprisings to oppose the KMT's control of China. However, they were betrayed by their own regiment and Mao's Red Army was forced to retreat to the mountains. The CCP faced early setbacks. First, Chiang Kai-shek had ordered the persecution of thousands of communists. Then, the Red Army had been forced to retreat. The CCP's urban organizational structure was nearly destroyed. However, by 1935, Mao had become the CC CCP's informal leader, and he was taking steps to centralize power and control beneath him. His leadership would prove one of, the CC's, one of the CCP's primary assets. The Second Sino-Japanese War and World War II paused the conflict between the CCP and the KMT. The CCP and KMT joined forces to fight against Japanese aggression. The CCP used this time to expand its influence by gathering support from ordinary people at the expense of its current ally, the KMT. There is old Mao Zedong. Following Japanese surrender at the end of World War II in 1945, the CCP and the KMT divided China in a civil war. The conflict lasted until 1949. At the beginning of the war, the KMT had three times more soldiers than the CCP. The KMT also had the support of the Americans and the Japanese. The, CC, the CCP, on the other hand, had the support of the Soviet Union and China's rural residents and students. Though the KMT seemed to have the upper hand, the CCP had strategic successes and was eventually able to overthrow the KMT. By December 1949, KMT rule in mainland China had collapsed. On October 1st, 1949, Mao declared the establishment of the People's Republic of China, PRC. We know of it now. The Chinese Civil War had ended. Consequently, the KMT retreated to Taiwan, where Chiang Kai-shek later established the Republic of China in 1950. Single ruling party, 1949 to present. The second half of the 20th century was dominated by the Cold War, where communist and democratic governance, governments competed for spheres of influence in the world. China and the Soviet Union were the two leading powers in the communist sphere of influence. Stalin and Mao Zedong ruled over their countries as authoritarians. Oh, them celebrating Stalin. Mao's rule over China was complete. He immediately began instituting communist reforms, often without regard to individual life. Some of his initial policies were land reforms that redistributed wealth amongst the people by removing land from the wealthy property owners and dividing it up more equally. This greatly reduced economic inequality. However, there was a policy to select at least one and usually several landlords to publicly execute during this redistribution. The campaign to suppress counter-revolutionaries, which involved public executions that targeted mainly former Kuomintang officials, KMT, Businessmen accused of disturbing the market, former employees of Western companies and intellectuals whose loyalty was suspect. A campaign to reduce opioid, opium addiction that was successful in the sense that it nearly eradicated the drug problem from society. However, 10 million drug users were forced into treatment and drug dealers were executed. The 100 Flowers campaign, which was started to encourage freedom of speech, people were encouraged to share their ideas and criticisms on how the Chinese government should be run. After a few months, however, Mao reversed this policy and around 500,000 people who had spoken out were persecuted. Mao's first five-year plan to quickly industrialize China. Like the Soviet Union, China was predominantly agricultural when it became communist. But communist countries often rely on industrialization. 
The five-year plans were meant to heighten China's industrial capacity, but it took a heavy toll on ordinary people who had to make significant sacrifices in order for this to happen. These and other draconian measures were used to centralize power in the hands of the CCP, namely in the hands of Mao. Split with Russia, oh no. During the 1960s and 70s, the communist, um, Chinese Communist Party, CCP, experienced a significant ideological separation from the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, also known as the Sino-Soviet Split. After the death of Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin in 1953, the Soviet Union embarked on political reforms aimed at worldwide coexistence. The Soviets softened their diplomatic approach while the CCP was hardening to the Western world. Mao moved China toward a strict form of Marxism based on the unique characteristics of Chinese culture and history. Mao's Chinese version of Marxism required rooting out the capitalist and traditional elements within the country that, he claimed, were sabotaging China's rise to the world to world power. By removing these subs subvers subversives, China would be able to accelerate their industrial production and complete the Soviet Socialist Revolution. Cultural Revolution. In 1966, Mao launched the Cultural Revolution. The goal of this campaign was to unify the country under a communist ver vision and boundless trust in Chairman Mao. To achieve these goals, violence and destruction were often used against anyone that was believed to be a threat. In the violent struggles that ensued across the country, millions of people, particularly intellectuals, were persecuted and suffered a wide range of abuses, including public humiliation, seizure of property, and on occasion, execution more pictures here for you to look at. Mm, wow. Yeah, interesting. Urban youth were forcibly displaced to rural areas as part of the campaign to accelerate food production during the down to the countryside movement. Historical artifacts were destroyed and cultural sites were ransacked as Mao attempted to eliminate traditional elements of Chinese society. The remains of previous emperors of China were even removed from their graves and burned. Whoa. While the Cultural Revolution ended its active phase in 1969, the campaign did not officially end until Mao's death in 1976. Following Mao's death in 1976 and a power struggle within the CCP, Deng Xiaoping became the paramount leader. Deng opened China to the world's markets and reversed some of Mao's leftist policies. Deng argued that a socialist state could use the market economy without being capitalist. Although the change in policy generated significant economic growth, the new ideology was contested by both Maoists and those supporting political liberalization. For many, Deng's economic opening was not enough. They wanted political and social liberalization as well. This internal unrest culminated in the 1989 Tiananmen Square protests, a series of political demonstrations for democracy led by students in Beijing. The protests reflected anxieties about the country's future. Deng's reforms had led to economic growth, but only some were benefiting while others still suffered in poverty. In addition to social inequality, Student protesters also called for greater democratic participation in fixing corruption in the government. The protests were brutally crushed. 300,000 troops were sent to quell the protests. Demonstrators and bystanders were killed. Deng's vision on economics prevailed and little changes were made to address the protesters' demands. 
by the early 1990s, the concept of a socialist market economy, an economic, an economic system with some private ownership of state industries had been introduced. In 1997, Deng's beliefs, Deng Xiaoping theory, were embedded in the CCP constitution. Since becoming China and the CCP's leader in 2012, President Xi Jinping has initiated the most concerted anti-corruption effort in decades. He has also reversed moves toward collective leadership in favor of centralizing his own power. As a result, foreign commentators have likened him to Mao. The political ideas that are at the foundation of modern day China are very different from those in the United States. The CCP values Chinese prosperity, collective effort, socialism, and national glory. <laughs> Consider what values underpin the society you live in. It's important to think about. Xi Jinping continues to emphasize the importance of com communist political thought in Chinese culture. His specific approach is known as Xi Jinping thought. It has been added to the Chinese constitution and is studied widely around the country. Today, the most popularly downloaded smartphone app in the nation is an app designed to teach Xi Jinping thought. It is called Quexi Shen Go, which translates to study powerful country. The CCP and modern China are inextricably linked as one and the same. China has depended upon its leaders to shape their Marxist ideology and increase its position in the world. From Mao Zedong to Xi Jinping, the recent history of China has been one of struggle and innovation. Time and the next leader will tell what comes next. And that's it. Um, as we move forward into this week, um, it might be wise to think about the rise of communism impacting China. And they have these large rules that impact um, how people within their society act. So answer the questions in the quiz. It's another big history assignment. So more history for me to teach. Hooray. Um, yeah. There you go. Have fun. Be safe. Getting to and from wherever you need to be. Have a good one. Bye-bye.